Hello everybody. I have a friend who asked me if I can create a video tutorial showing her how to allow her users to edit the colors of elements on their profiles so they can have unique design choices on their specific profile. You can give users design editing abilities for almost every visual aspect of the application. Text colors, background colors, box colors, and allow them to upload images to use as backgrounds, banners, and things like that. I'm going to quickly show some front-end client-side code, then explain to her what needs to occur on the back-end server side. And for the rest of you watching, this is kind of beginner type stuff, so you might already know how to do all of this. So please don't get angry if it's not advanced enough for you. Okay, let's start with the bare bones of an HTML document in your favorite IDE or code editor. And the first thing we're going to do in the document, and this would be in your body element, but I'm just going to pop it right here, div id my box. Then I'm going to add an input color picker that has the text edit color next to it, and it's input type color with an ID of CLR1. Now, the last thing we need here is a button with an ID of my button or whatever you want to name it with a click event for the button that's going to run a function that we're going to put up here in the script called apply color. And you see this ID CLR1 for this color picker? We're just going to put CLR1.value there. And if you're in an old, if you have users with old browsers and you want to make it backward compatible for them, you have to put document.getElementById CLR1 there. But in modern browsers, they automatically create an object reference in your script for any elements on the page that have an ID. So that's why you'll see me just referencing the IDs as objects without using document get element by ID. Okay, the next thing you want to do is write your function. And the function is apply color. And then this value here that we're passing through is being accessed right here in the function parameter. And first, we're just going to run an alert or you can use console.log if you have your developer tools open in your browser. Or you can just use alert. That way you can't miss the box. And then the next line is my box, which is this little div dot style dot background equals color. So that's where how we're going to apply the color choice to the box. Now the very last thing we need is just a little bit of CSS to style that box. We're going to give it a width of 300 pixels, height 100 pixels, and a background color of anything we want. This will be the default the default starting background color. Now run that in your favorite browser. And you'll see a light blue box. And then they can choose the color they want. And then apply color. And you'll see the color value here in your alert box. OK. And then the color gets applied. Now the next steps that you're going to want to take is right here, you're going to Ajax posts to the database to save their design choice. So when they choose to select to change the color, they'll see the color change. And then behind the scenes, that choice of color will go into a database column. OK, now that's 2 thirds of the application done once you do that. Now the last part of the application is up above all of this, you're going to want some server side code such as PHP or whatever your server side language is that you're using. And before this document ever even loads, before they see anything, you're going to want to access the database and pull that number or that color value out of the database and then apply it here into your CSS using your server side scripting language. And you can add your server-side scripting language directly into your CSS code as a dynamic variable. And part of that first 
part of the application where you initially get the value out of the database is if there is no value there, let's say they haven't adjusted anything and their database column for that color value is empty, you're going to want to have a default color value in your server side scripting, which may be this value here. So that you would pop out of here, X, and then you would put, for instance, PHP, opening and closing tags, and then you just echo your CLR1, for instance. Maybe that's the name of the variable that you have in your server side code. Something to that effect. But that would be pretty much the whole application. And then you would do that sort of thing for each and every little element on the page that you want to give them editing abilities over. So let me just put a comment up here. So the comment reads, before the document loads anything, query the database to get their saved design choice. If their color, if their column is empty, apply the default color to the CSS in the document. Okay, so the steps are, on the front end, you give them this little application. Then once they choose the color, you Ajax post to the database to save their choice of color. And then finally, you set up some server-side code on top. Before the document loads, you query database, get their saved design choice, and if their column is empty, you apply the default color to the CSS in the document, and it's that simple. Now let's see, if you need to learn which I, you probably already know, but if you need to learn, uh, let's see, let's just go to search on adamcorey.com and just type in Ajax, and that'll lead you to my JavaScript Ajax programming section. And uh, there's a whole bunch of different examples here. If you click on the Ajax programming link on top, you'll see all five of those. And I believe that you are already fluent in making queries to a database using PHP, which is really simple. And I have, uh, let's see, if you go back to videos, there's a PHP section here. There's 115 videos there. And in all of these tutorial sets, in all of these series, you'll see a whole lot of different examples of how to MySQL database tables creation and all that stuff and scripting against the database using PHP. There's a whole bunch of other different stuff in there you can check out too. So that should give you everything you need to know for the entire application.